हरिओम हरिओम एंड अ वेरी वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू वन एंड ऑल टूडे ऑन डे टू ऑफ द नाम महिमा सेशन बाई स्वामी मित्रा नंदा जी सो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट अ सेशन विद एन इन्वोकेशन बाई अभिजीत अनिल कुमार a divine singer who's from chinmay vidyalaya virgambakam alumni he has also sung in the bhajagovindam beats of bharat with chinmay yuva kendra chennai this was a song that you were listening to just now so over to you abhiji hari om कृष्णा वासुदेवाय कृष्णा वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदना च कृष्णा वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदना च कृष्णा वासुदेवाय कृष्णा वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदना च नंद गोपकुम नंद गोपकुमाराय नमो नम नमो Thank you so much, Abhiji. Salutations to Sri Krishna, who is the sun and the joy of Father Vasudeva and Mother Devaki. Salutations to him, who is the boy of cowherd Nanda and who is himself the Lord Govinda. Salutations, salutations to him again and again. What a beautiful shloka to start our uh, session, which where we are talking about the Nama Mahima. Yesterday we saw Swamji take up three names, beautiful names: Bhagwan Krishna. Oh, I've already told both the names: Krishna and Bhagwan. Bhagwan Krishna. and also jagat patil so we are eagerly waiting to see more names and more than that the hidden insights which swamji is giving us and uh, i take pleasure in thanking i think all of us 150 of us here for uh, being so kind to us and telling that you know little little you try to change you you have come down to our level and you've taught us okay everything is not possible in one day do little thank you so much for that swamji over to you समस्तजन कल्याण निरत करुणाम नमा चिन्मय देव सद्गु ब्रह्म विवर मै सल्यूटेशन टू एव्रीबडी हरि ओम प्रणाम यस्टे वि डिस्क परंधाम अर्षा फॉर्गॉट टू से दट परंधाम and then bhagavan and jagat pate krishna we did last time okay uh parandhama is the goal which we need to aspire that is the goal of life and trying to bring out the best in everything we do is the way of life let's get this clear in our head goal of life is parandham the highest which we need to reach 
and how do i get there in the way of life small things what i do i must give my best to it then bhagwan is the six qualities and then we saw jagat pate jagat pate the lord of the uh, world and we are also living in our own world in that world we must be a master master means we don't depend on anything mentally dependency is surrendering our freedom so when we do not depend that means we are a master that that is to say with things around without things around in our world i will not lose my happiness i would stay happy no matter what happens in my world i will not lose my balance then we are a master jagat pate in our own world but avatar like krishna comes he is a jagat pate of the entire universe so anything happening in the universe in that vast universe he was a master this is what we saw yesterday and today now we will go into another name mahatman arjuna always thought krishna as his friend and so he you know like my friend he yadava you know he has called him in all kinds of names but after ninth chapter when krishna started talking about they are in me i am not in them when nine chapters of gita were over the attitude in arjuna started changing that's why in the 10th chapter he started seeing krishna as the absolute supreme in front of him so all the while he was calling him by various names now he is calling him parandham bhagavan and then he says here mahatman salutations to you o mahatman great atman mahatman great soul in the ninth chapter krishna speaks about to arjuna people who are deluded he says mogasha moha karmanah moha gnana vichetasah there are people who are totally deluded rakshasim asurim chaiva their behavior is like rakshasa asurim undivine very devilish kind of a behavior they have and what do they seek mogasha moha gnana moha vichetasah these people are totally deluded performing moha karma moha gnana and moha means deluded not relevant at all seeking what is not relevant is rakshasim and asurim chaiva there are so many people we do mogasha our desires you see mogasha vain desires of no use at all mogasha moha gnana and knowledge we cultivate also is of absolutely no use what is the use of that knowledge absolutely no use and we we have gathered that kind of a knowledge isn't it useless knowledge who was miss world on this particular year in the year 2001 who was miss world there are people who will tell you immediately this so and so was miss world this was her height and this was her weight and this is what she liked now this knowledge is it of any use to you moha gnana waste gathering wasteful knowledge desiring wasteful things there are people who live like that they are mohatma not mahatma mohatma souls individual moha deluded mohatma they live in mogasha mo, moha karmana etc on the other hand having said that krishna immediately says mahatmanastumam partha daivim prakritim ashrutah bhajante mam ananyam manasah what do they do they invoke me continuously taking shelter to my daivim prakritim to my higher nature they are called mahatma mahatmanastu mam partha these great individuals the great souls they seek the absolute taking shelter into the daivim prakriti to the higher nature of the self taking shelter in that they seek the higher ananya bhajate they worship they seek the lord continuously meaning mohatma 
desires wasteful things in the world mahatma seeks the absolute and keeps the absolute as his priority ananya bhajan seeking continuously means uh, um ananya bhajan means uh, even in ninth chapter you find ananya chintayantamam continuously seeking the lord continuously seeking here means that individual has kept the lord as his priority or that individual has kept lord as her priority keeping the lord as the absolute priority is the way of mahatma arjuna saw that krishna is not ordinary person not like one of the people whom we knew here was a divine person even the gopis when krishna was a child when he was 6 7 years old that's that's the age he lived with them after that he moved he left gokul and vrindavan he was not there beyond 7 years so when he was a child when he was going around even the gopis strongly felt and they said we do not know who this kid is but one thing we know he doesn't belong here he is not like one of us not our tribe at all he is a different person altogether the uniqueness was seen in him from the beginning that's how they saw so arjuna also saw here as a great individual a divine manifested walking around and it is their good fortune that they could associate with him so he says here is a enlightened great soul mahatma so now how should we do mahatma krishna himself says mahatmana stumam partha daivim prakriti maashrita ashrita taking shelter where in the divine ways of life and keeping the lord as the highest goal ananya bhajant bhajate once we seek the lord meaning those of us who have kept or who have shifted to keep the lord as our priority in life what are you living for to attain parandham what is your goal in life parandham i want to reach that for those of us who keep goal moksha or god realization as our highest priority we have shifted from mohatma to mahatma it's a transformation journey from mohatma to mahatma many people whom we call mahatma sometimes are mohatma only deluded in their own way very very few people have kept the lord as their goal so a transformation personally we should see that uh, we should transform from mohatma atma deluded in moha living wasteful life to mahatma what is that keeping ananya bhajante keeping the lord as the highest priority seeking the lord continuously continuously seeking here means keeping him as the priority in short you are a devotee first and then all other roles come to you then we are mahatma we shift there this shift has to happen so who are you if someone asks you who are you you should say i am a seeker and a husband a wife a brother sister a businessman son father anything comes next i am a seeker who is a father i am a seeker who is a wife i am a seeker who is a mother this shift has to happen if this shift happens or i am a devotee and a mother i am a devotee and a wife i am a devotee and a sister i am a devotee and a brother i am a devotee and a citizen of this nation so first i am a devotee and also other things when this shift happens in us we shift ourselves from mohatma to mahatma in life this is very important we are born deluded living in delusion living in moha let us not die in moha we should shift from moha we should move towards becoming mahatman great soul means you are not aspiring small things now your aim is the highest when we seek the highest we have shifted great the greatest becomes our goal naturally that individual who was living in delusion now is seeking the higher things in life 
shift has happened. And Krishna not only was, not was seeking, he was reveling in the higher. As he was continuously reveling in the higher, Arjuna saw that this man is a Mahatma. He is in the war, but war doesn't affect him. He's staying in the war, but nothing disturbed him in the war. He was so smiling and taking up whatever has happened because he knew what is going to happen. And he warned everybody, if we head into this war, this is what will happen to all of us. This is what will, the, will be the effect of the war. Try to settle it. Tried his best for peace. He himself was a peace ambassador. But nobody was ready to listen. And therefore, war was inevitable and he knew what, it, what uh, would happen. So knowing what is going to happen, he came there with such a calm mind, smiling, stayed there, went through it, undisturbed by the war, Mahatma. Because war was not his goal. He was not attached, nor was there any anxiety. He aspired higher things. So when our vision becomes higher, God becomes our priority, we shift from, we transform from Mohatma to Mahatma. Mahanatma. Otherwise, Mogasha, Moha Karmana, Moha Jnana. This is what we gather. So this shift is something which we need to do. And Arjuna saw that Krishna was not involved. He was always reveling in the higher. Therefore, Arjuna calls Krishna Mahatman. In and through all what Krishna did, he kept that vision always in his mind. Shankara says in Viveka Chudamani, forgetfulness is death. Pramade mrityuhu, pramade, forgetfulness. When we forget our goal, the moment we forget I'm a seeker, the moment we forget I'm a devotee, that is equal to death. We have lost, we will waste time. And after some time, we will wake up again and then start seeking. On seeking, we should not be part-time seekers. We should be full-time seekers. Check, are you occasional seeker? Once in a while when you hear a lecture saying, okay, now let's seek again. Or, uh, you know, like once in a while when you go to a temple or a festival, come seek. Or your sadhana happens only when Guru Purnima comes or uh, Gurudev Jayanti comes or Shivratri comes, you take up sadhana. How I'll do? Three, four days and then go. Wait for next Guru Purnima again. These are all part-time, occasional, time-passing seekers. Don't be that. We should not be time-passing seekers. Now and then seeking. No. We should be ananya. Bhajante ananya manasaha. Continuously seeking the Lord. Meaning we should keep the Lord as our goal and we should not shift our mind from it. Priority should be God, a full-time seeker, not a part-time seeker. Part-time seeker, most of the time, moha jnana, moha karma, moha, moha gasha, vain desires, wasteful uh, discussions, wasteful knowledge, wasting. Now and then coming to seeking and then going back to moga. No. From, let us make this point. We were born in moha. But by the time we die, let's be Mahatma. Let's shift. Moghatma, Mohatma to Mahatma. This transformation is very important to us. When we do it, then we keep him as our priority in life. Topmost, that's what we are living here for, to achieve it. How do I achieve it? Through the duties what I have. The seeker who is a mother has to play the role of a mother to the best of her ability. But that is a role she's playing. She's a seeker first. The father who's playing the different duties, the father has, he plays those duties. But he's a seeker first. A seeker executing duties of a father. A seeker executing duties of a mother. You are a seeker first. Once we establish in it, we shift from Moha to Mahatma. That's a beautiful way to move ahead in life. So Mahatman is one such beautiful name Arjuna calls Krishna. And the next name we are going to take up is uh, 
ಪುರುಷೋತ್ತಮ ಪುರುಷೋತ್ತಮ ಉತ್ತಮ ಪುರುಷ ಉತ್ತಮ ದ ಬೆಸ್ಟ್ ಪುರುಷ ಅಮಂಗ್ ದ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ಸ್ ದ ಬೆಸ್ಟ್ ಅಮಂಗ್ ದ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ಸ್ ರಾಮ ವಾಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಮರ್ಯಾದ ಪುರುಷ ದ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ಆಫ್ ತ್ರೇತ ಯುಗ ರಾಮ್ ದ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ಆಫ್ ತ್ರೇತ ಯುಗ ವಾಸ್ ಕನ್ಸಿಡರ್ಡ್ ಎಸ್ ಮರ್ಯಾದ ಪುರುಷ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟಬಲ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಹೂ ವಾಕ್ ಅಪಾನ್ ದ ಅರ್ತ್ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟಬಲ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಅಟ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಆಸ್ ಅ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಹಿ ಪರ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಇಸ್ ಡ್ಯೂಟೀಸ್ ಟು ದ ಬೆಸ್ಟ್ ಮರ್ಯಾದ ಪುರುಷ ರಾಮ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಪುರುಷೋತ್ತಮ ಉತ್ತಮ ಪುರುಷ ಡಿಫರೆಂಟ್ ಯುಗ ದಿಸ್ ವಾಸ್ ರಾಮ್ ವಾಸ್ ಇನ್ ತ್ರೇತ ಯುಗ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕೇಮ್ ಇನ್ ದ್ವಾಪರ್ ಯುಗ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ವಾಸ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ಲಿ ಡಿಫರೆಂಟ್ ಯು ನೀಡ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಡಿಫರೆಂಟ್ ಪರ್ಸನಾಲಿಟಿ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಗುಡ್ನೆಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಯುವರ್ ಗುಡ್ನೆಸ್ ಮಸ್ಟ್ ಬಿ ಅಗ್ರೆಸಿವ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ನ್ಯೂ ಆಲ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಶಕುನಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ನ್ಯೂ ಆಲ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಶಕುನೀಸ್ ಪ್ಲಾನ್ಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಕ್ಲೆವರ್ ವೆರಿ ಕನ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಶಕುನಿ ಹೂ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಯೂಸ್ ವೇರಿಯಸ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ನ್ಯೂ ಹೌ ಕನ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಶಕುನಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಗೋ ಅಂಡ್ ಹಿ ಕುಡ್ ಮೇಟ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಡೌನ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಟೈಮ್ ಪುಟ್ ಅ ಚೆಕ್ ಮೇಟ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಮೂವ್ ಶಕುನಿ ಟ್ರೈಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪುಟ್ ಅನ್ ಅಪ್ಸ್ಟಕಲ್ ದೇರ್ ಸ್ಟಾಪ್ ಇಟ್ ಡಿಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಅಲೌ ಶಕುನಿ ಟು ಮೂವ್ ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ಈಕ್ವಲಿ ಅವೇರ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಕನ್ನಿಂಗ್ನೆಸ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಕನ್ನಿಂಗ್ನೆಸ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ವಾಸ್ ಅವೇರ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ವಾಸ್ ಅವೇರ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಎನಿಮೀಸ್ ಸೊ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ಸಚ್ ಅ ವೆಲ್ ಇನ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಡ್ ವೆಲ್ ಎಜುಕೇಟೆಡ್ ಬಟ್ ಹೆಲ್ಡ್ ಆನ್ ಟು ಧರ್ಮ such a rare being who lived life and played every role to the best of his ability showed to the world purushottama uttama purusha now this word comes even in one chapter of the gita is named as purushottama yoga the chapter 15 of the gita is called purushottama yoga what does that mean there it is highly philosophical the word purushottama there is highly philosophical uttama purusha beyond shara and akshara beyond that which is perishing and that which is relatively appears real that is one is the world and maya we do not know when maya started on realizing maya can end till we realize maya is real relatively so that which is beyond vidya na vidya that which is beyond the world perishing world and relatively not perishing maya between shara and akshara that truth which illumines both is purushottama uttama purusha that is philosophically but when living here uttama purusha means best among the human beings now who is the best among the human beings we saw lord ram lord krishna and there are so many other great men who must have walked best among the human beings but here how do we apply it in our life you know purushartha we must have heard of this name purushartha purushartha means self effort self effort uttama purusha purushottama if we have to be best among the human beings lot depends upon the self effort purushartha we need to put self effort in everything we do if we don't put enough self effort we will resign to something called fate that's very negative approach what has to happen will happen yes because what has to happen is happening because in the past that was our self effort the result of it is coming now so we cannot alter the result of it now because those were the actions of the past and the fruit of that action is coming what i need to get i will get please remember this what you get is the result of your purushartha in the past future results depends upon the present purushartha future is born from the present present is born from the past so we should not resign to this uh, Uh, negative philosophy whatever has to happen will happen yes but please remember whatever has to happen is happening out of your own self effort in the past that means if we can take 
this responsibility to ourselves we are responsible for our life my present i am responsible for my present because of my past actions my own past actions acted with free will acted with self effort acted with purushartha this is the consequence i see in the present so the intelligent way would be like i bring in my self effort in the present to have a glorious future to have a beautiful future the future which you want present is the uh, place to act this is where we need to perform so those who use this purushartha well is purushottama how much purushartha are we using think we drop the self effort soon we should continue what i have understood from gurudev swami chanmayanand ji is go out and give your best once it happens accept it as his will till then put your self effort how beautiful he has said it he says keep that as keep the highest goal the goal which you can't even reach go on working for it self effort work on it work on it improve 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 but when something happens then i accept ha ah, this was to happen happened i accept after my self effort not before so this way when we live we change our systems within the mechanism inside changes each one would take responsible for their life and the believe me with self effort in the present the future will be as you want because consciously you are creating the future with right self effort in the present so every one of us when we use this self effort to the best of our ability purushottama uttama purusha we are so we need to continuously work on putting this self effort now when something comes to me in spite of my self effort karma phala it has to come it came to me accepted how you accept is also purushartha what comes to us is prarabdha how i accept my prarabdha is purushartha what comes to me i can accept and suffer or i can accept saying okay this was required and i see it as an opportunity for me to grow i can look at it differently how we respond to what comes to us is purushartha what comes to us is prarabdha so even though my past actions are responsible for what i what i get today in the present i have my self effort how to respond to what i get how we respond to our prarabdha is totally our purushartha totally our purushartha we must put the self effort when we put this kind of a self effort that is purusha invoking the spirit purusha prakriti purusha the spirit the people who have lived life with absolute spirit many of us are dead while living body is alive there is no spirit in living beaten out dried completely dead still body is alive that's not the way to live we should live life with full enthusiasm with full spirit long back some 5 6 years back one of the ias officers met me he came to discuss about some of the innovative programs we were doing in the mission he was talking to me about it and uh, he was very happy the way in which chinmaya mission is contributing to hindu renaissance and he was very very pleased with our work and he left his card with me a very beautiful visiting card we generally don't save visiting cards we don't keep because how many cards you will go on keeping you save it in your phone if the number is important otherwise you drop 
but in this card he had written something very beautiful the tagline behind his name was so beautiful the tagline said let the spirit dominate matter please understand let the spirit dominate matter matter prakriti spirit purusha let's purusha dominate matter body is matter you and i are that atman the spirit the spirit should dominate our life we should live life with full spirit there was a saint living in vrindavan and mirabai wanted to meet him jeeva gosai his name is mirabai wanted to meet him but the saint had a very peculiar uh, sadhana practice it, uh, i mean hinduism gives room for anybody to practice anything we don't restrict each one can choose their own method that's the biggest freedom hinduism has because we have a right to lead a life how we want so this guy had a sadhana the sadhana his sadhana was he will never meet a woman and he was considered a very respectable man there so meera bhai wanted to meet him saying i want to come and meet you um so he sent word through his disciples no 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 i'm not meeting i'm not meeting she's a woman i'm not meeting i have not met i don't want to meet women now he chose to uh, do a sadhana that kind that's not a sadhana which is recommended for all but some who wants to choose that way they can it is their life that is what i say in hinduism all methods are accommodative from primitive to sublime we have methods people can choose what they want that is the freedom so he chose that way but meera is not a lady who will just give up like that she said how can he say something like that staying in brindavan then he she sent word through his through his disciple who came to say no my master is not willing to meet you so he sent word and i mean she sent word to him saying in brindavan there is only one purusha that is krishna how dare he says that the uh, he is purusha here he is not a purusha there is only one purusha in vrindavan that is krishna jeev gosai heard that came running to meera saying oh mother thank you this is something which you hit me and it has opened my mind only purusha krishna the rest rest are all prakriti we have not realized we are only matter still but krishna lived a life a complete life isn't it wherever he went his spirit was never less spirited life be it warfare be it playing when brindavan and gokul with uh, with with the children and the gopis there or a statesman in in the in hastinapur or a strategic advisor in mahabharat war or a person a savior who came to save uh, draupadi or a friend who guided arjuna through bhagavad gita in any role his spirit was i complete purusha i remember another beautiful incident my teacher guru swami chanmayanand ji was was giving lectures in jaipur rajasthan and there when they were going uh, up and down for the talks and all that they saw one shop it was a marble statues are sold in that shop beautiful statues and uh, so gurudev looked at that and he found a krishna a beautiful statue of krishna he said this is so nice i want this statue for one of the ashrams to keep so on the last day when his talks got over next day morning he was going and he said that krishna we should buy so the host called the shopkeeper and he said early morning flight uh, swami chinmananda has on the way to airport we will drop into your uh, uh, stall can you open it for us early morning and uh, we would like to buy the statue when he heard that gurudev wanted to come to his shop he felt highly blessed and he said sure 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 early morning he opened the shop and gurudev and the and, and his host were traveling they dropped in to the shop and krishna saw that so, i mean gurudev saw that beautiful statue and he wanted it he said i'm i want this statue we'll buy this 
Now the shopkeeper, Rajasthani, and Meera is from Rajasthan, and they have great devotion for Meera, Radha, etc. Great devotion they have. And that statue has Radha also. It is sold as a set. Krishna and Radha together is sold as a set. So he said, here, here, take Radha also. Uh, Gurudev said, no, 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 I want only Krishna for our ashram. I am not going to keep Radha because the kind of puja we do, only Krishna is fine with us. He said, no, 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 you must take Radha. They come with a set. I am not going to give you otherwise. I am not going to give you otherwise. You take both or no? Now the shopkeeper, that is shopkeeper's faith. He is convinced that he could not separate Krishna and Radha. They have to go together. So he was not ready to give in at all. He said, no, 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 no. Swamiji, no matter what, if you want, take both. No, you don't pay, you take both. But uh, I can't give you only Krishna. You have to take Radha along. The shopkeeper telling Gurudev. Gurudev looked at him and said, you know, I am his Radha. Do you understand? Gurudev telling this to the shopkeeper, I am his Radha. The shopkeeper did namaskar. He said, take Krishna and you go. Purusha, the rest is all matter. Living in matter, we should seek that Purusha. And once we start seeking that Purusha, how do I seek? Through my self-effort. In everything, let us put our self-effort. Give our best in everything. Don't accept anything as fate. Only when it happens, you accept. It was bound to happen. It happened. And I'm going to laugh at the result. I'm not going to be disturbed by it. How I respond to Prarabdha is my Purushartha. What I do in the present will be my future Prarabdha. And when that Prarabdha comes, how I respond to it is my Purushartha. So in response also we have the free will. And creating future also we have the free will. Use this free will well in life. It is important that we use this free will. Without self-effort, what is the use of living? Without self-effort, you know how we live? We exist. We don't live. Without self-effort, it would be existing, just existing, managing to just survive with basics. Self-effort is bringing out one's potential fully. Bring out your potential totally. Never underestimate your potential. You know, Dr. Kalam said something very profound. He said, thinking small is a crime. Dr. Abdul Kalam. Thinking small is a crime. When we think small, self-effort is not necessary. Just exist. Think big. Think deep. Have higher goals, nobler goals. Let's strive for it. Put all the effort necessary. Strive. I read a very beautiful letter of Swami Vivekananda written to one of his devotees on something they asked and regarding organization, various things. But uh, the gist of that letter is uh, Vivekananda said, for last... 10 years, struggle was my motto. Struggle. Don't give up. Strive. Struggle hard. Put your best effort. For last 10 years, struggle was my motto. When things are down and nothing going the way in which I want, I tell myself, struggle. Don't give up. Struggle. Don't quit struggle. When things are fine and they are just as I want, I tell myself, don't quit, strive, struggle. Now we should, we should not quit. We should not accept things just like that when it comes, I have accepted and now nothing can be done. No. At whichever position we are in life, 
whichever stage we are in life, we can live with self-effort. Give your best to everything you do. Without self-effort, if we strive for the highest goal, parandam, want to reach parandam, self-effort is necessary. Put everything you can, struggle. All great achievements have come through that intense struggle. That is called sadhana, that is called tapas, self-effort. So putting that self-effort is important. When we give our best that way, in everything we do, we would reach our goal. Purushottama, let this name be deep in us. Let the spirit dominate matter. Let prarabdha come to us and we will respond well with purushartha. No matter what I meet, how I meet is my choice. No matter what I meet, because I meet it because I meet them now because of my own actions in the past. My own free will is coming to me in the present as destiny. My future destiny depends upon what I do in the present. Keeping this in mind, give your best. Purusha. Purushartha. That way, living with total self-effort, we will become Uttama Purusha, the best among the mankind. The best way a mankind should live because we are born with that freedom. We are born with that free will. Don't compromise that. Never underestimate the power of free will. Never underestimate your own potential. Never underestimate what we can do from within. That is important. So whenever we bring up that kind of a self-effort, that is called Uttama Purusha, the best way of living life like that. So we saw Mahatman, great soul, Mohatma to Mahatma, living as matter to spirit, use this power of Purushartha to become Purushottama, Uttama Purusha. And the next name we are going to see is Hari. Krishna is called Hari, Vishnu is called Hari. The 650th name in Vishnu Sahasranam is Hari. Vishnu. Hari means, uh, there are two, three meanings. We will see one or two of them. There are quite a few meanings for the word Hari. One is uh, one who destroys our sins. Person who destroys our sorrows. Once our sins are gone, sorrows go. Harihi, O Lord, come and destroy my sins. Knowingly, unknowingly, I must have performed actions. I have all that gathered around and my Sanchita karma bag is too huge. In the present I have created something, Agami karma, that is again the future uh, karma is also very huge. These all should go. I am tired, beaten out completely. I am taking refuge in you, O Lord. Hurry, come to me and destroy my sins. Take this away. This has been with me for long. I intensely seek you, O Hari. Who can destroy, who can come and destroy my sins, my sorrow? Aneka janma samprapta karma bandha vidahine. Not karma cultivated in this life. Aneka janma karma. Aneka janma. Samprapta karma bandha vidahine. The bondage which I have cultivated through countless lives, a millennia. That has to go from me. With your knowledge. Atma Jnana Pradhanena. Oh Hari, give me that knowledge and get this bag out of me. I want to 
go out free. I don't want this latching me down, pulling me down, pegging me down. My own sins, I repent. I know I have performed knowingly, unknowingly. I repent. Get me out of this. I am tired. With that sincerity, we should invoke Ari. Who will come, protect and remove us from our sorrow. And Krishna is naturally a Hari. Look at his life. Wherever there was the sincere devotee suffering, he went and removed their suffering. The Pandavas, direct beneficiaries. Draupadi, direct beneficiary. When with earnestness invoked Krishna, he went and solved. There's a nice story, beautiful story. I mean, uh, uh, this is something which we should remember because this incident in Krishna's life uh, is important for us to know. When he was studying with his guru, Sandipani, Krishna's guru is Sandipani. So he went to his guru, Sandipani. He stayed there and he was studying along with his brother, Balram. And quite a few were there. That's where he met Sudama, etc. All were there in the Gurukul of Sandipani, Rishi Sandipani. So Krishna was there studying. And he learned it very fast, very quick, very I mean, bright man, the student he was. And uh, when he learned everything, he went to his guru and he said, uh, what can I offer as Guru Dakshina? Both Krishna and Balram, still children, teenagers. They said, what can I offer to you as my Guru Dakshina? Sandipani was like, uh, was very fulfilled seeing a student like uh, Krishna. The teacher was happy that he had an opportunity to mentor Krishna for a while, give him all information and show him the way, Margadarshi. So he was very, very happy. He said, I'm, you being my student, I feel fulfilled, nothing I want. No, 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 that, that cannot be. When we have learned something, we have to offer Guru Dakshana that is called. It's a beautiful tradition where the student goes and gives something to the teacher. And the teacher has to ask Guru Dakshana. Agastya Rishi had one student by name Sudakshina. And when Sudakshina went to Agastya Rishi and asked, what can I give as Guru Dakshana? Agastya Rishi straight, he said, bring Rama to my ashram. That is your Guru Dakshana. Do you understand? What is the Guru Dakshana the Guru is asking? Go do tapas. Someday Lord Ram will pass through the forest. Bring him to our ashram. This is the Guru Dakshana. The Guru Dakshana the teacher is asking is, go meet Ram. Meeting Ram is moksha. Meeting Ram is evolution. Meeting Ram is fulfillment. And you have to do tapas. Then bring him to our ashram. This teacher was only checking how deep the student can go. And the Guru Dakshana he asked was that. So the student generally wants to offer something and the teacher would give some opportunity for the student to do. So here, Sandipani had nothing to ask. But his wife, Guru Patni, Guru Ma, Sandipani's wife came and said, sometime before you came, my son, was taken away by Asura, kidnapped. We don't even know if he's alive or he's dead. We don't even know. Can you find out and bring his son, bring our son back to us? Can I ask you that as Guru Dakshina? The Guru Ma is saying that. Krishna said, it will be done. We'll do it for you. We'll go now. And he and Balram went and searched the earth. Hell and heaven. They searched everywhere. And they realized uh, this demon called Panchajanya was a conch. In the shape of a conch. Went to the bottom of the sea and he kept this child in a shell. And he was hiding there. Krishna has to fight the demon release that child out from that conch asura in a conch shape release the child out and hand over to sandipani guru dakshina 
and that shell krishna kept as his conch krishna's conch is panchajanya panchajanya the conch with krishna blows he is a symbol of gratitude please remember what is the conch krishna has the conch he blows is sense of gratitude are we grateful for what we have received till today please understand how much the lord has blessed us with we must be grateful my guru swami chinmayanand ji says being unhappy is being ungrateful to god if we are unhappy it is like being ungrateful to god for all that what the lord has given can we be unhappy imagine what all we have received till date simply forgetting everything so that conch which krishna has is a sense of gratitude when we remember this clearly we will be grateful to god we will never be unhappy because there will be a great fulfillment with absolute love and respect to the lord for what all he has blessed us till date so krishna kept that as his conch now going back to the incident where krishna hands over the child to sandipani to the rishi now obviously both of them are very happy to get their son back that was the deepest sorrow which they had he removed it hari hi hari is one who will remove sorrow who will destroy our sins this is one meaning of the word hari second meaning of the word hari is a uh, one who destroys avidya and its effects avidya ignorance and its effects samsara invoking hari our avidya ignorance will be destroyed non apprehension will be destroyed because of non apprehension samsara is there misapprehension world is god but i don't see god i see world what is is god when ignorance goes away the world will appear as god when we are rooted in ignorance god will appear as world god appears as world from ignorance standpoint world will be appearing not appearing world is god when ignorance is gone we see the world because of ignorance when ignorance is gone what was there as world was god always so hari hi is one who will destroy this non apprehension avidya therefore the misapprehension is also gone samsara is gone its effect avidya is the cause samsara is the effect hari destroys this there are three things three people let us say just like a story there was this guy called sam and he wedded to sara and they named their child sagar there was this guy called sam he got married to sara and they had a child called sagar sam sara sagar sam sara sagar sam sara sagar hari alone can destroy that avidya goes with that ignorance goes sam sara and sagar out samsara sagar 
if you want to get out of it hari is the lord we should invoke in our prayer invoke hari don't invoke hari to ask something small small things in the world oh hari bless me so that i get this or i get that i get a promotion or i buy a land or i build a house or you know this happens to my son that happens to my daughter don't invoke god for all that artartarti devotees they are invoke hari saying come to me take my sins away it has made me limited i want to get free from it oh hari come to me and get my sins away completely take my sins away oh hari come to me and destroy this avidya non apprehension so that samsara sagar is out effect cause an effect get this out of me i need to be liberated oh hari come to me and all those who invoked krishna that way he responded to them as hari liberated them from their sorrows gave them the highest knowledge made them evolve towards the higher so we saw today mahatman purushottam and hari another three names we'll take up tomorrow we stop here for question answer over to harsha yeah hari om swamiji uh swamiji you spoke about being aggressively good and uh, puja gurudev has also told that the crux of bhagavad gita is active resistance to evil so how do we practice this in our daily life as seekers we are ignorant whenever we are less informed you understand when we are less informed about something we are ignorant when we are well informed about anything then you have the knowledge it is a matter of time converting the knowledge to wisdom so how well are we informed to be aggressively good or active resistance to the evil you should be well informed krishna's way of life was that he was just not good person he was good and he was well informed about everybody what a duryodhana can do what is the weakness of dhritarashtra what is the strength of drona what is the weakness of drona where bishma can be misled where bishma got misled you know he was aware of everybody he was aware of his own army he was aware of the opponent the people who lived he had his uh, team in place who collected all information those who are well informed will definitely do well less informed will be a struggle so to be aggressively good we must be well informed on all those things which we are connected with so that when i am well informed i would know how to survive there i know the system well and i would know to survive in that system and once i know to survive in that system i will establish myself in that system then you make a change if you want you conquer you do whatever you want but you do it from being established without knowing the system less informed about the system we go and try to bring a change that would be foolish you will be wiped out so you must be well informed survive establish this is the method to fight evil active resistance to the evil is you understand this well so widely well informed person will establish and that that would lead to being aggressively good you know about everything and therefore you know how to do it okay we will stop here now it's 8 yep 7 sorry hmm. thank you so much swamiji uh, we have a couple of quick announcements if i could have the screen please thank you so these are the classes that have been continuing all through the lockdown also 
uh, all of you know this is Bal Vihar, uh, where we have classes on Saturday and Sunday for our tiny tots, where they learn about culture and our values in a fun manner. And there is a set curriculum. Uh, Chinna Mission has a set curriculum uh, according to which the classes are being taken. The next wing is uh, Shushu Vihar, which is very, very cute. It's for toddlers and infants below six years. It's happening on Sundays and Tuesdays. All the details we will be putting in the chat box also, so all of you can take a look at that. Uh, the next wing that we'd like to talk about is Chinna Yuva Kendra. This is for the youth where uh, we, they take classes in a very different manner. It's more about experiential learning and all the details have been uh, given here. Uh, another thing that we'd like to get your attention to is our Chinna Academy of Civil Services, where we have our online IAS classes, which are both offline and online. And now a new batch has started. So uh, all of you, please take a look at that. Also, it started from October 26. Uh, this is a beautiful initiative from Chinna Mission uh, it's called Chinmay Sunday Parshala, where all of us come together as a family and we spend a couple of hours uh, on Sundays and come to know about our culture, our values, our scriptures. So the details have been given there and they will be put in the chat box also. This is so beautiful. It is a session for singing from Swara to Ishwara. This becomes a medium of connecting to Bhagwan. It's not that you need to know how to sing. So all of you can join. It's free, but registration is a must. So the details have been given here. They have started a new class on Vijay Dashmi too. So all of you can join in. It's a new class. Yeah. Thank you so much. So just to give the gist, Swamji said, from our journey to Mohatma to Mahatma, let us hold on to Bhagwan, who is our Parandhama continuously, for which let us do our Purushartha well, accepting all that comes as his prasad, let us seek the Purusha through Purushatha. Don't just exist, live and celebrate life. Let us intensely pray to Hari to destroy our ignorance because of which we have sorrows and sins. Let this samsara sagara go so that we realize our own nature. Let us hurry home. Thank you so much. Over to you, Swamiji. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Hari Om Sri Guru Bhyo Namaha. Hari Om. See you tomorrow at six. Adio. Thank you so much, Swamiji. We'll see all of you tomorrow for day three. Thank you. <laughs>